Hello guys, this is Justin from Molokuki.com and in this new tip tutorial we're going to take a look at some ice and snow shaders that I've created. Now due to the nature of the shaders and that it takes a lot of time to get it right and it's scene dependent, uh, we will not going to go through the phases and ev every process that it takes to reach the shader. Um, what I've done is I've created the shaders, it, it took me roughly around uh, 30 to 40 minutes for each shader to create and I've created some, some presets these presets will be available for download uh, probably below the, the tutorial but I'm gonna show you in this tip tutorial what they're made of and uh, how they were made now I want to say that they're completely procedural they they don't use any images so you don't need anything else to use the shaders. They are made completely with uh, Moto maps. Now I have some renders here. This is the ice shader that I created and this is the snow shader that I created. Now th this is uh, made using the default Luxology preset scene except that I modified mine a bit to reflect uh, the CG cookie nature. So in order to use the shader you can either drag them to your preset directory or just drag and drop them in here. So we're going to talk about the snow shader. Now first of all you may notice that it doesn't look nothing like the one I have here. Well this is because mainly uh, this snow preset uses subsurface scattering and since by default in Moto subsurface scattering is set, it's, it's set to be affected only by the direct light and we don't have any direct light in the scene we need to modify this into both and then you're gonna see that we're getting the result that I showed you earlier so let's let's take a look here at how this shader is composed well first of all uh, what we need for a snow shader is a very low diffuse amount since we're going to be using uh, uh, subsurface scattering and luminous uh, property of uh, the material. And also we need to have conserve energy on since we're not using any, any specular. So you can see that the, the, the settings here are pretty basic. We don't have any reflection, we don't have any specular. Just a 20% diffuse amount and the color is somewhat bluish. Uh, you can look here and if you're replicating this on your machine you can copy this hexadecimal RGB code and you're gonna get the same color that make sure that your diffuse amount is set to 20 percent now don't think that when I when I created this shader I, I knew from the beginning what I needed I basically went and added maps and played around with the settings until I was happy with the result and basically I, I I knew that I was going to need subsurface scattering, but I didn't know how I was going to use it. So uh, that's what I'm saying that it takes a lot of time. So next, what I did, I added a noise for the diffuse color. This this noise is pretty uh, pretty subtle here, as you can see. Uh, what I did is I've modified the the first color so it's not pitch black it's a 0.57 because it, if it's black uh, we're gonna get something like that and I didn't really want to get uh, that black of a snow so you can probably you can see it since um, let me see if I yeah it's there are tiny tiny dots in there and that's what I wanted so I, I left it like that but what I did is I increased the contrast a little bit by using the bias and gain controls and of course this is completely up to you and then what I did I mul normal multiplied it over my basic uh, material over my basic color and I used normal multiply this is uh, basically it's the same as multiply only that it doesn't darken the material that much okay and I inverted it because I didn't like uh, the outcome okay and next what I did is I added that that small bump that you can find into snow so it's again it's a noise but this time it's set to the opacity the, basically it's the same map as this one only that it's set to blend mode to normal and I brought the opacity way down because at 100% is 
uh, too strong for the, for for the snow. So you can probably choose something between 20 and 25. I left mine at 20, but you can if you use the preset in in your scene, you're free to to change it to match your uh, scene dimension. So basically, this is a duplicate of the first noise node. And like I said, the size is fairly small, as you can see here. This one is a bit bigger because I, I wanted to see the bump. I didn't want it to be that small. But this scale here is scene dependent. So if, you, if you're if you using it in a, in, a, in a large scene that's built on scale, you probably need to go over these settings and change them. Then what I did is I duplicated, again, I duplicated my noise. Uh, but this time what I did is I changed it to turbulence. I didn't modify the biasing gain. Okay, and I, ch I changed it to diffuse amount. So we get those uh, small black dots in the snow, but the rest of the snow is close to white. But in our case, close to blue. Now, now you're going to see why I'm using the 20% diffuse amount. I'm using it because if I set it to 50, Right now it's going to be too, um, well, basically th this gets nullified if we use the diffuse amount um, texture. But like I said, I, wh while I was building this, I didn't really know what I was going to use. So I started with a 20% diffuse amount. Of course, right now this can be set to zero and it won't affect our shader in any way. Okay, so next what I did is... I looked at some pictures of snow and I saw that it has some tiny tiny uh speckles uh, around the, uh, at the, on the surface that are brighter than the others. So what I did is I replicated that using a cellular map. It the settings are customized here a bit. Like I I used 20% cell width and transition width of 10. I didn't modify the bias or gain, but what I did is I set it to luminous amount and I change the size to something small. Of course this is again customizable and that gives me those tiny white speckles. Now I used luminous amount because diffuse amount was already set and th there is basically there is no other way to obtain those over bright spots. Then what I needed to do is of course add some displacement. Of course if you are uh, using something like sculpted terrain you may want to turn the displacement off uh, because it might uh, you know increase the render time but all in all, in all uh, this is what I did uh, I added a stucco displacement this is part of the enhanced moto textures and I changed the size and then I played around with these settings, but I, I think they're at default right now. And that gave me some some displacement. It's it's not very very big. And then I added some noise to give it a more uh, ununiform and a big displacement. Now this noise is quite big, it's 25 millimeters, uh, except from this one. But of course you can you can play around and say you want to change this one to five millimeters so you can see more going on. But anyway, that's what I did here, and it worked. So I'm quite happy with the result. And then what I did is I used diffuse color because I wanted to change the diffuse color a little bit. And you can see this is mapped to incidence. And if we take a look at the gradient here, you're going to see that 100% uh, means basically the outskirts. And I wanted the outskirts, basically the fall off, to be a bit more blue than, than uh, what it is. So I then I normal multiplied it over the default color and use a opacity of 65%. I didn't want it to be quite blue because snow, if you look at it, if you stop and stare at it, you're going to see that it's, it's white. But in essence, it's actually it's a bit tinted, but it's very, very small tint. Okay, and the one, the, the basically the magic bullet of snow is subsurface amount. That gives it this snow look because if you uh, I don't know if you notice but say w when it's uh, snowing outside and you're inside and you go outside for the first time in the day you can barely keep your eyes open and that's because that snow is very very bright 
So this is what I did. Uh, subsurface amount. This is based on displacement height. And again, the gradient is edited a bit, as you can see here. But I think that for our text, for our uh, sphere here, I might have forgot to modify the value because I, initially I modified the color to see where I'll get where I will get uh, more subsurface amount. So if you see, we have here the value of one at almost 12 percent. So let's say 12 percent value, 100 percent. And then 0 0.5 at a value of 0. And it doesn't really change the scene too much. Probably that, that's what I didn't modify it. But it's very, very useful. And then I tweaked a bit the subsurface scattering uh, settings. Uh, basically the color, which is again tinted a bit blue, but you can, you can barely see that it's blue and the scattering distance and the front weighting and that's about it for the snow material. The, the snow material the snow material was pretty straightforward I didn't have to do too much uh, poking around so I'm gonna delete that and now I'm gonna bring in the ice uh, whoops the ice preset so the ice preset is something a bit more complicated well uh, what I did is it's going to take a while to render here, but the ice preset uses a subsurface scattering as well, but you're going to see that we're going to get a pretty greenish, bluish result. Well, that's because when I created the ice shader, I didn't uh, consider taking into account the subsurface scattering to both, so I only set it to direct only, okay, so it doesn't really affect uh, the subsurface scattering, the, the indirect light. So basically right now we're not having too much subsurface scattering going on. But you can turn this to both and then you're gonna go, you can go in here and just change the subsurface color uh, sat saturation to something uh, way down, something like like that and maybe desaturate it quite a bit. But um, the most of this green color is given by this transparent color. Now again what I did with the subsurface uh, with the sorry with the ice shader I started to, to build on top of it. So let's take a look here. And yeah with uh, without the transparent color, the subsurface scattering looks really, really ugly. Now, this takes a lot of time to render. Let me see if I can speed that up. It's already set to draft. But we just put it <coughs> like that. And what I did is again, I used the displacement texture, but this time I used it, uh, I used cellular with a fairly high size and if what you can do to speed up your renders is you can set here in the settings displacement as bump and this uh, the ice shader you may not see too many maps here but that's probably because well what I, what I wanted to do is achieve a very very uh, realistic ice shader and I was I went through a, maybe I don't know 50 or 20 types of settings but um Sometimes you have to do that in order to reach your result. Like for example, I, I was trying to figure out how to get that. You see that uh, ice doesn't have a very clear refraction. So first I tried using the uh, refraction roughness, but with refraction roughness your render times would go through the roof. So I ditched refraction roughness and I, then I added a small bump on my surface to break that, that refraction. So then I thought, hey, maybe I can use a gradient to control the refraction roughness. But again, the setting, the the render time goes through the roof because if you take some piece of ice and you look at it, you're going to see that uh, towards the outskirts, like towards the the edges, 
it is uh, the, the 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 refraction roughness is not very noticeable it's basically zero while in the middle uh, you have a very high refraction roughness so it's very confusing all uh what i have to say is that whenever you have to do a shader you need to to, to take a look at a lot of photo references of ice well in our case ice but uh whatever shader you want to do <coughs> excuse me you want to take a look at a lot of references in different environments so uh this is how how i approach doing uh shaders now uh, in the form that was on <coughs> cg on cg cookies uh site actually the moto cookies site asking of what kind of training you guys like well i i didn't quite um uh, understand why people wanted uh shader tree training because frankly you can use Moto's help to know everything you possibly want about the shader tree but knowing that and watching a lot of training that doesn't mean that you can build your, sh your shaders on your own straight like that well that won't happen you, you're gonna have to play uh, play with the maps and play with the settings to understand in your own way how to create shaders and how to achieve the result that you like because this ice shader looks like this in my mind maybe when you say ice shader you you're thinking of something completely different also don't forget that you can also take a look at the luxology forums and you're gonna see a lot of ice examples there and none of them look the same because every CG artist has his own vision. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to download the shaders from the Luxol uh, from sorry from the uh, CG Cookie site. And probably I will do more tip tutorials on shaders, but they will be very very uh, limited. And I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.